It started with a simple, innocuous ad on Craigslist. I was looking for some used furniture for my new apartment, something affordable yet decent. The ad listed a beautiful vintage dresser, in excellent condition, and best of all, it was incredibly cheap. Must sell quickly, it said, and I, intrigued and a bit naive, decided to respond. The seller, who introduced himself as Mark, sounded pleasant over the phone. He explained that he was clearing out his grandmother's estate and needed everything gone by the end of the week. It's yours if you can pick it up today, he urged. Eager to snatch up the bargain, I agreed. Driving to the address given, the sky grew dark, and a fog began to roll in, thick and opaque. The GPS led me to an old part of town, where the houses were large but worn by time. Mark's place was a decrepit Victorian mansion, its paint peeling and the garden overrun with wild bushes. It looked like a scene straight out of a horror movie, yet the allure of the deal pushed my hesitations aside. I rang the bell, and the door creaked open immediately, as if it had been waiting just for me. Mark greeted me with a smile, though there was something unsettling in his eyes, a sort of desperate eagerness. Come in, I'll show you the dresser, he said, leading me through a dimly lit hallway lined with old portraits that seemed to watch me as I passed. The house was cold, the kind of cold that seeps into your bones, and I shivered despite my jacket. We reached a small room at the back of the house, where the dresser stood. It was as beautiful as in the pictures, but the room, it felt off. The air was heavy, and I had the chilling sensation of being watched. Mark noticed my discomfort and laughed, a sound that didn't quite reach his eyes. Old houses, you know? They make all sorts of noises, he said, attempting to ease the tension. He opened a drawer to show it was in working condition. That's when I saw it, a small, old photograph lying at the bottom of the drawer. It was a picture of a woman, her expression twisted in fear. Curiosity peaked, I asked, who is this? Picking up the photo, I felt a sudden, icy draft. Mark's demeanor changed, his face darkening. That shouldn't be there, he muttered, snatching the picture from my hands. His reaction was too quick, too harsh. I'm sorry, I stammered, taken aback by his sudden anger. I didn't mean to pry. He forced a smile. No harm done. Let's just get the dresser loaded up, shall we? His voice was calm, but it was forced. I agreed eager to leave, but as we moved the dresser, a chilling whisper filled the room, almost imperceptible. Don't leave me here, it seemed to say. I froze, looking around, but Mark didn't react. Had he not heard it? Did you hear that? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. Hear what? Mark replied, looking genuinely puzzled. Nothing, I said shaking my head, trying to convince myself it was just my imagination. We loaded the dresser into my truck, and I was ready to leave when Mark said, you know, there are a few other pieces you might be interested in, if you have a moment. Against my better judgment, I nodded. There was something about the place, a story untold, that drew me in despite my fear. We walked back inside, the house groaning as if burdened by its own secrets. Mark led me to another room, this one darker, the air thicker. This was her room, he said suddenly, his voice soft, reflective. My grandmother's. The room was untouched, a capsule of the past. A heavy layer of dust covered everything, and the air smelled of old perfume and something else something rotten. I felt a cold hand of dread clutch my heart. Why did you keep it like this? I asked, my voice trembling slightly. 
Mark didn't answer immediately. When he did, his voice was laced with sorrow. She never really left, he murmured. As he spoke, the temperature dropped, and the faint sound of a music box playing could be heard. The melody was slow, haunting, a lullaby that seemed to echo from the walls themselves. I turned around, searching for the source, but found nothing. Mark, what is happening? I demanded, fear edging my words. He looked at me, his eyes hollow. She likes you, he said, his voice a whisper. She doesn't want you to leave. I backed away, bumping into a chair that scraped loudly against the floor. The music stopped abruptly, and the house was silent, so silent it roared in my ears. I needed to get out, to escape this madness. As I turned to leave, the door slammed shut by itself, leaving me trapped in the dark with Mark and whatever haunted this dreadful place. Mark's face twisted into a grimace of despair as the door clanged shut, echoing ominously throughout the silent room. You can't leave now, he whispered, more to himself than to me. His voice quivered with a mix of fear and resignation that chilled me to the core. I turned to face him, my heart pounding in my chest. What do you mean I can't leave? Open that door right now, I demanded, but my voice was shaky, betraying my growing terror. He shook his head slowly, his eyes dark pools of sorrow. It's not me keeping you here. It's her. She's been lonely, so very lonely, he explained, his voice trailing off as if lost in a memory. I glanced around the dimly lit room, every shadow seeming to move, every corner hiding whispers of the past. The heavy scent of roses, long wilted and gone, permeated the air, suffocating me with its intensity. I moved towards the window, hoping to find an escape, but the curtains remained firmly shut, as if held by unseen hands. Who is she? Your grandmother? I asked turning back to Mark, who now seemed a part of the room's furniture, so naturally did he blend into the gloom. Yes, he said simply. She died here, in this room. And she never left. She can't leave. The atmosphere thickened, a tangible veil of dread that settled over everything. I could feel her presence, oppressive and heavy, then, the air shifted, growing colder, and I saw her, a figure in a long, flowing gown, her face obscured by the shadows, standing in the corner of the room. She was watching us, her posture stiff and unnatural. My breath caught in my throat, and I took a step back, my back pressing against the cold wall. What does she want? I managed to whisper my eyes fixed on the spectral apparition that seemed to flicker in and out of existence. She wants company, Mark replied, his voice hollow. She's been alone for so long. When you picked up that photograph, you caught her attention. She likes you. The figure moved then, gliding across the room with a grace that was unnervingly silent. I could barely make out her face but I could feel her eyes on me, intense and unblinking. I don't want to stay here, I said, my voice breaking with panic. Please, I just came for the dresser. But you found so much more, Mark said, his voice tinged with a sadness that almost made me pity him. Almost. The woman, his grandmother's ghost, hovered closer now. I could see her more clearly, her face was sorrowful, etched with the lines of a hard, lonely life. Her eyes, when they met mine, were filled with a desperate longing. Help me, she whispered, her voice a chilling echo in the cold room. How can I help you? What can I do? I asked, the words tumbling out in a rush of fear and confusion. You can stay, she said 
her voice barely audible. Stay with me, forever. The room began to spin, the walls closing in, the shadows deepening. I felt dizzy, disoriented, as if the house itself were alive, breathing with the slow, heavy breaths of the dead. Mark stood silently, watching, resigned to his fate as the keeper of this haunted place. I need to leave, I said again, more firmly this time, though my voice quivered. I can't stay here. You can't leave, Mark repeated, his voice now a monotone of hopelessness. None of us can leave. I looked from Mark to the apparition, and back again. The desperation in the room was palpable, a living thing that clung to my skin, seeped into my bones. I knew then that I had to find a way out, not just for myself, but for Mark and his grandmother's spirit too. But how? As I pondered, desperate for a solution, the ghostly figure moved closer, her hand reaching out to touch mine. Her touch was icy, paralyzing, and as her fingers brushed against my skin, the room fell away, and I was plunged into darkness, her whispered pleas echoing in my ears. In that endless dark, her whispers turned into wails, each cry slicing through the silence and chilling my soul. I struggled against the icy grip, but it was futile. Her presence enveloped me, a blanket of sorrow and unfulfilled yearnings. Why are you so sad? I found myself asking, my voice echoing strangely in the void. Her lamentations paused, and in the eerie stillness that followed, her story began to unfold, a tale of loss and regret, spoken in a voice that trembled with age and agony. She had been wronged, betrayed by those she trusted most, her life cut tragically short within these very walls. Her spirit, bound by the pain and the brutality of her untimely demise, was tethered to this realm, unable to move on. Listening to her story, my fear began to mix with a profound sadness. Her existence, if it could still be called that, was a tapestry of grief. How can I help you? I asked again, this time not out of fear, but from a desire to give her the peace she so desperately sought. You must find the truth, she whispered. Reveal it. Let them know what happened to me. And then you'll let me go? I inquired, hope flickering in the darkness. And then I can rest, she confirmed, her voice a sigh of wind. And you can leave. The darkness receded like a tide, and I found myself back in the room, Mark watching me with wide, fearful eyes. What happened? He asked. She needs us to find the truth about her death. I explained, my own voice sounding distant to my ears. We need to find out what really happened. Mark nodded slowly, a resigned acceptance passing over his features. I've always known something was wrong, he admitted. But I didn't know how to help her. Together, we searched the house, uncovering dusty documents and old diaries hidden away in forgotten corners. Each piece was a puzzle, and as we pieced them together, the tragic story of Mark's grandmother came to light. She had been murdered, her death made to look like an accident, and the truth buried as deeply as her body in the cold earth of the mansion's garden. With the truth uncovered, we contacted the authorities, who were skeptical but agreed to investigate further based on the evidence we provided. As they took over, Mark and I watched as the house seemed to sigh in relief, the oppressive atmosphere lifting with each passing moment. On the night the truth was finally made public, the air in the house was different. It was lighter, almost peaceful. Mark and I returned to the room where I had first felt her touch. We waited, not knowing what to expect. As the clock chimed midnight, her apparition appeared one last time. She looked different now, the sorrow was gone from her eyes, replaced by a grateful light. Thank you, she said, 
her voice no longer a whisper but clear and melodious. Then, with a smile that lit up the room, she faded away, her form dissolving into motes of light that drifted upward and disappeared. The house was truly silent then, the first genuine silence it had known since her death. Mark looked at me, a tear tracing down his cheek. She's free, he said, his voice full of wonder. And it's all thanks to you. I couldn't have left knowing she was in pain, I replied, feeling a weight lift from my shoulders. As we left the house that night, it felt like walking out of a long, dark tunnel into the light. The curse was broken, the spirit was freed, and the house could finally just be a house, no longer a prison of the past. I drove away from the old Victorian mansion, knowing I'd never return. Behind me, the house stood quiet and still under the starry sky, a silent sentinel of the past, but no longer haunted by it. The darkness had been confronted, the truth revealed, and the spirits laid to rest. And while the shadows of that experience would always linger with me, I knew I had done something good, something right. In the end, the true horror wasn't the ghost or the haunted mansion, it was the unspoken truths and the buried pain. And sometimes, the only way to banish the darkness is to drag it into the light.